despite initially receiving ample global support for its military offensive against Hamas after the October 7th attack, Israel is now facing increased criticism for what many are calling a disproportionate response in Gaza. The relentless bombing has killed about 17,700 Palestinians, most of them women and children. That's according to the Gaza Ministry of Health. Uh, NBC News cannot independently verify those numbers. Humanitarian operations have collapsed, and aid workers, along with the civilian populations, are pleading for their lives. Just yesterday, the Biden administration bypassed congressional rules to authorize the sale of 14,000 tank shells to Israel, worth about $106 million. Tank shells are the, uh, the artillery, the ammunition that tanks use. And on Friday, the U.S. vetoed a U.N. resolution calling for a ceasefire in Israel and Gaza. Public sentiment in the U.S., however, tells a different story. The majority of the American public, 65 percent, are now calling for a ceasefire, according to a poll released late last month by The Economist and YouGov. The number is even higher among Democrats, with 77 percent calling for a ceasefire. A Reuters poll from November 15th found a similar outcome, 68 percent of Americans supporting a ceasefire. But remarkably, in a time of significant division on various issues, there is growing a, a, a consensus among Americans for a need for a ceasefire. In fact, many of the organizers behind a growing number of rallies calling for them is, uh, are Jewish Americans, with rallying cries that include, not in our name, and ceasefire now. And now, some larger American Jewish groups are having that same discussion. On Thursday, more than 500 staffers representing more than 140 Jewish organizations across the country, from synagogues and museums to community centers and philanthropic organizations, signed an open letter urging President Biden to call for a ceasefire. They say it's important for the public to know that there is, in fact, quote, broad support within the Jewish community for a ceasefire, end quote. The letter reads in part, quote, we are individuals who work for a wide array of Jewish organizations across the United States coming together across the broad range of beliefs, practices, backgrounds, and identities that make up the rich fabric of the American Jewish community. We are uniting together in this moment to call for a ceasefire, the release of all hostages, and a commitment toward a long-term political solution that ensures the freedom and collective safety of Israelis and Palestinians." End quote. Some of the signatories come from pro-Israel groups that initially opposed a ceasefire, including J Street, the Israel advocacy group. On Thursday, J Street also announced that it was reconsidering its stance, saying, quote, this is a moment of truth for the U.S.-Israel relationship. U.S. security assistance is not an entitlement program to be provided in the form of a blank check. If we do not see evidence soon that the government of Israel is, in fact, making meaningful changes to its conduct of the war and its attitudes regarding post-war arrangements, then J Street will no longer be able to provide our organizational support for the current military campaign, end quote. For more on this, I'm joined by Jeremy Ben-Ami. He is the president and founder of J Street. He's also the executive director of J Street PAC and the author of the book, A New Voice for Israel, Fighting for the Survival of the Jewish nation. Uh, Jeremy, thank you for being with us this morning. I appreciate it. There's a lot of nuance to this discussion. And it's, we are in a world in which if sometimes you say the word ceasefire and someone makes assumptions about who you are and what you think. Um, you are trying to bring that nuance to this conversation. So can you help me? I've tried to give an explanation of what's going on. But can you let me know what your, what, what's the current stance of J Street and, and, and how's that changed? Well, I think J Street represents a very central uh, voice within the American Jewish community. We, we're people who have deep, deep connections to Israel. We have family and friends who were affected by October 7th in the deepest way. We know people who are uh, hostages uh, still uh, in Gaza, and we support Israel's right to self-defense. We understand it can't live uh, with a group like Hamas uh, armed and ready to attack it constantly on its border. Uh, and we're not pacifists, and we understand that there has to be, at times, a military response to a military threat. Uh, so we do believe that Israel has this right uh, to self-defense, yet, uh, at the same time, we look at what is happening in Gaza, and we understand that uh, not every effort is being made to minimize the harm to civilians. Not every effort is being made to maximize the amount of humanitarian assistance. This government of Israel has no commitment to a political resolution of the underlying conflict with the Palestinian people. And there's only a political resolution to this conflict, and it has to involve self-determination and freedom for the Palestinian people. And so we have real problems with the way 
that the Israeli government is pursuing this campaign at the same time that we stand with the Israeli people in understanding that they have every right to pursue justice against those who uh, took their people and attacked and killed their people on October 7th. So there's nothing weird about your, your position. However, there are people here and in Israel who have argued that people who hold views or express views like yours um, are outside of the mainstream. Uh, we, we have 16 or 17 senators. I spoke to Senator Van Hollen this morning who are asking for ways of thinking about the aid that we give to other countries and condition them on uh, with humanitarian conditions. Uh, tell me about, is there an evolution here and is there somewhere that this could go that could become reasonable and meaningful? Well, look, take the question of aid and Senator Van Hollen's amendment. The United States spends trillions of dollars a year on a wide range of programs, domestic and foreign, Every single dollar that we spend comes with strings attached, right? We say to people, whether you're building low-income housing or you're providing food uh, to, to the hungry, uh, or we're providing assistance to people abroad through our foreign aid programs, we say, here are the things you need to do. Here's what our money is for, and here's what it can't be used for. And what Senator Van Hollen is saying is that the money we provide to the state of Israel as it pursues its justifiable desire to have uh, justice for October 7th, that there are certain things it can't do with our money. Uh, and that is a very, very reasonable approach. It's, a, it's right down the middle of what should be American politics. You want to have money from the United States, then you have to use it in the way that follows American law and international law. Much, much like the broader American public, the divide on this issue uh, becomes most pronounced if you look along ger uh, generational lines. One of the individuals who endorsed the open letter that I talked about in the introduction expresses concern that Jewish organizations might alienate younger uh, Jews if they're uncritical of their support for Israel. He told NBC, quote, if you're isolating an entire generation of American Jews, who's going to be the next generation of leaders and donors and members? If so many people my age and younger don't feel like they need these organizations or have a place in them, I'm terrified they won't exist for my children when they come of age, end quote. Tell me what you think of that. Look, I, I empathize deeply with that view. I mean, several members of my own staff signed that letter. Uh, I'm, I'm very proud of uh, my children and my children's generation, uh, that they have a very deep commitment to justice. Uh, they understand oppression. Uh, they want to fight against oppression. Uh, and what happens on a daily basis between the state of Israel and the Palestinian people that it rules over without providing them with equal rights uh, is something that this generation, younger generation of Jewish Americans is very committed to fighting to correct. Uh, and, and I couldn't be more proud. Uh, the government of Israel, even as it is, is pursuing this military campaign, is at the same time turning a blind eye to radical settler violence on the West Bank that is displacing Palestinian families and displacing Palestinian villages. This is simply not in keeping not only with the values of the United States, but it's not in keeping with the values of the of the Jewish community and the lessons that we should have learned from our own history. So I very much respect and, and stand with the people who are standing up for justice and against oppression within the American Jewish community, and particularly the young people that I think we've raised really well. Jeremy, it's good to talk to you. Thank you for being with us. Jeremy Ben-Ami is the president Thanks, and founder of J Street. He's also the executive director of J Street PAC.